Good morning. Good morning to all of you that are out there this morning. I just want to welcome you. Welcome this wonderful morning. We want to just say that the Lord is awesome this morning and there's an awesome presence of the Lord this morning. It's an awesome day outside. People are running around. It's just, just, just amazing this morning to be found together, that we can worship, praise the Lord, and that we can be in His Word this morning and be in the now rainbow Word of what God's doing. So I'm going to ask Sister Hillary to open up in prayer. I want you to be blessed that you've got a cup of coffee and you, you're watching us. I want you to enjoy your coffee. If you're just there at home and you're still in your pajamas, that's okay. You do church this morning the way you want to do church. You do it in the comfort of your home, the way you feel comfortable. But I just want you to get the fullness of what the Lord's doing today. So may you be blessed and may you get excited for what the Lord's going to do. Be excited. You know, the, the main thing about, about coming together and being the Word is always being excited for what God's going to do. That's that what moves me, is that coming to that place of just an excitement, you know. Oh, what's the Lord going to do this morning? What's the Lord going to say this morning? I want you to be excited. Amen. Literally. Lord, we humbly come before you this morning. We say thank you for a blessed day, my God. Lord, Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice in it, my mm. God. Lord, Lord, so this morning, my God, Lord, we pray, my God. Lord, Lord, everyone that's out there, my God, Lord, that is connected, my God, Lord, Lord, that you will bless them this morning, my yes, God. Lord, help them just to let go, my God, Lord, of themselves, my God, Lord, and that you take over, my God, Lord. Lord, I pray, my God, Lord, against fear, my God, Lord, depression, yes. my God, Lord, Lord, each of bow down to the mighty name of Jesus, my God, Lord. Lord, I pray this morning, my God, Lord, as we go into praise and worship, my God, Lord, Lord, it's you, my God, Lord, Lord, will just take over, my God, Lord, Lord, help us to just let go, my God, Lord. Lord, this morning, it is not about ourselves, my God, Lord, but it is all about you, my God. Lord, so we pray, my God, Lord, that you will take over this morning, my God. Lord, Lord and I pray, my God, Lord, Lord, that you will use your servant as he's going to give your word, my God. Lord, that you will bless him, my God. Lord, speak in and do him, my God. Lord. Lord, and I pray, my God, Lord, that you will help people out there to worship with us this morning, my God. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in Him shall have perfect life and will never, never, never perish. We're going to sing that song this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus, let us just embrace the goodness of God that is running after us. He wants to be part of your life this morning. So, let us just embrace the goodness of God. Let us just embrace it this morning. Jesus, we worship you, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, my God. We magnify your thank holy you, Jesus. Jesus this morning, my God, Lord. But let me say thank you, my God, Lord, for your goodness. For your goodness, my God, Lord. That is running after us, my God. Lord, Lord we say thank you, my God. Thank you, my God, Lord. Open up our eyes this morning, my God.
Thank you. 
situation and circumstance but you know what this morning I just I want to speak to you a little bit about Paul and about Paul being shipwrecked and, and I want to speak to you about the Lord the Lord put it on my heart this morning and, and I thought the Lord saying it's happening amen it's happening and we've got to embrace ourselves because it's happening amen so I want you to be I want you to be grounded in the word I want you to pen in a paper I want you to take some notes I want you to just listen to what the words of the Lord going to come through to you today and what the Lord's going to say to you this morning amen Whatever the Lord saying, I want you to receive it, write it down, make it a prayer point, make it a place of change. Amen. I want to read from Acts 27, 9 to 12. And I'm going to read from Acts 27, 21 to 26. Uh, amen. And I'm going to read from Galatians 2, 1 to 2. Have you got that? And 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28. I'm going to read it again. Acts 27, 9 to 12. Acts 27, 21 to 26. Galatians 2, 1 to 2, 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28. Amen. So we, we're going we're gonna to spend some time in the Word of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading. And, and my Bible, the, the heading of my Bible in Acts 27 is Paul's warning ignored. 
Now, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also. If by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, Crete opening toward the southwest and the northwest, and winter there. Amen. I'm going to read it again now. Now when much time had been spent, and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. I mean, Paul was perceiving, I mean, he, he could see the tempest, he could see the weather, and Paul was perceiving, I mean, that there was a storm coming, and he was perceiving, and he was, and he was speaking to them and telling them, listen, we've got to be careful, and, 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 he, and he said to them, that, that, that many lives will be lost, I mean, and, 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 and we're going to lose the cargo if you don't listen, I mean, and he, and he heed a warning unto the men, and he, and he was telling them, listen, this is what's going to happen, and he was speaking out of the perception of how he felt at that point in time, amen, and, and at that time, they chose to listen to the helmsman, they chose to listen to the owner of the boat, they chose to, to listen to those that were speaking amongst them, amen, and I, and I want to say this to you, what the Lord was saying to me this morning, no matter what Paul said, this was happening, no matter what Paul spoke into their lives, this was happening. This was going to happen no matter what was going to transpire, no matter what was being done. They were, this, this was going to happen and they were going to listen to the natural reason. There was no way they were going to listen to Paul because listening to Paul didn't come with reason. And I, and I felt the Lord saying, there's many things that's going to happen in our lives and it's happening. I want you to write it down. It's happening. What's happening? The unknown. What's happening? The unexpected. It's going to happen. Amen. There's many words that's been spoken over our lives, many words that's been spoken over the now and the situation and in the season. But I felt the Lord saying it's happening. And what's happening? The unknown is happening. The unexpected is happening. Paul spoke to them and he said, listen, this is what's going to be happening. And they, in the natural, they could not realize what Paul was saying because what Paul was saying was not expected. I mean, though it was winter in there, they didn't, per they didn't perceive what Paul perceived. They didn't understand what Paul was saying. They didn't listen to Paul's reason because you know, Paul's reason was not a natural reason. I mean, am I speaking to somebody today? Most of the time we're reasoning, but we're reasoning on a natural reason and not a supernatural reason. We're not reasoning on how Paul was reasoning. Paul was reasoning by the word of God. He was reasoning with what the Lord had put upon him and he just come out of a fast and the Lord had put it upon his heart and he was perceiving that, listen, these things are going to happen. And I felt the Lord say this morning, there's many times that the Lord is speaking, but whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And don't get conformed or get consumed by what's happening. Remember, the Lord was still with Paul. Although the natural and although they decided they're going to do this and they're going to go about it the way they're going to go about it. Amen did not remove God from the equation. Write it down. Amen. Sorry, God. I'm just wiping a bit this morning. was just being in the awesome presence of God. Amen. So, no matter what reason, no matter what reason Paul would have given them, they would not reason with Paul because Paul was not reasoning on a natural basis. Amen. And I felt the Lord saying, although they didn't listen and heed to the voice of Paul, the Lord was still with Paul. So some situations are not going to heed to your voice. Some circumstances are not going to heed to your voice. Some people are not going to heed to what the Lord's placed upon your heart. But don't lose heart. I feel as, as, as men and women of God, we lose heart when, we, when God gives us a word and we're speaking to somebody and they don't receive the word or they don't, they, don't, they don't grab hold of what the Lord's saying. Even in our own life, sometimes we're praying and the Lord's showing us something and we don't want to, we don't want to acknowledge it because it doesn't make sense it's in our reasoning. Amen? So I felt the Lord saying, no matter, what, no matter what Paul said, no matter how Paul came about it, this was going to happen. The unknown was going to happen. The unexpected was going to happen because these, these people, I mean, they, the houseman did not expect what Paul was saying. So it was the unexpected, amen. The owner of the ship. I mean, there's no way he's going to say, listen, take my ship out to get, to get, to get, to get, to, get, to go into disaster, to go shipwreck, that, my, that I may lose my ship. No way. But to him, what Paul was saying was impossible. Come on. It was the unexpected. And then the Lord is saying today, although they didn't hear to Paul, although they didn't listen to what Paul was saying, the Lord was still with Paul. 
The Lord didn't leave Paul. You see, even David, when David looked at Bethsaida, he looked at him from a distance. The Lord was still with David. He didn't leave David. He was still with David. Although David was going to do something that was unexpected to those that walked with him. Amen. God did not leave him. God hasn't left you because of the unexpected. He's not leaving you because of the unknown. I let the contrary to that. I feel God's embracing you more. God's going to grab hold of you more. Because you know what? You're stepping into the unknown. You're stepping into the unexpected. You're stepping into a place that you don't find reason. Because that's the unexpected. Right now. The unexpected is... There's no reason. You can't reason with the unexpected. You can't reason with the unknown. Because it's something you do not know. It's something you do not expect. You don't expect to leave your house and to go through some stuff. We, we didn't expect to be on lockdown. We didn't expect to not, not get paid for a couple of months. We did not expect for this transition to come. But we didn't expect to be locked up with our family and not be able to go. It was the unexpected. It is the unknown. And I felt the Lord say many people are, are getting conformed because they feel because they're coming to the unknown, they're coming to the unexpected, that the Lord is not with us. Man, the Lord is with you more today than ever before. Listen, one of the things the Lord said to me, so let me read, the, let me read this. Quote. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman. I mean, the houseman is like that one that drives the boat. And the owner of the ship then by the thing spoken by Paul. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail. Okay, I'm going to stop there. They're going to listen to the professionals. They're going to listen to those that, that were speaking and those that, those that could reason with the weather and those that could reason with the tides. They could reason. They said, listen, where we're at now, it's, it's not suitable to winter here. I mean, so everybody that was speaking... Amen. We're speaking based on what they know in the natural. And that's what makes it difficult for me and for you. Amen. That's what makes it difficult because everything the Lord is telling us to believe, amen, goes beyond our reasoning. Come on. Amen. It goes beyond our reasoning. It goes beyond our expectation. It's the unexpected. It's the unknown. It goes beyond what I can reason. I can't reason on the, on, 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 on the Lord's level. And Paul tried, he, 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 perceived, he perceived that they're going to be shifted. He perceived that, that they're going to, there's going to be a loss of cargo. He even went as far as saying there's going to be loss of lives. I perceive this is going to happen. And I'm cautioning you, and you're ignoring what I'm saying to you. But this way, and Paul didn't go on about it. He didn't carry on speaking to them. He realized that, listen, they're not going to listen to me. They're going to listen to the reason that, that's at hand. And what was it? The houseman is in control of the boat. He knows exactly how to steer the ship. So who are they going to listen to? They're going to listen to that one that's steering the ship. And I want to say to you today, be careful who's steering your ship. Because if I am saved by Jesus Christ, if I've been set free and I have received Jesus as my personal Savior and I've made Him Lord and, and King over my life, I need to make Him helmsman. I need to make Him the, 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 the author, the finish of my faith, and I need to make Him steer my ship. That's what we're saying today, because as long as I'm looking at reasoning in the natural, because they weren't doing something wrong, guys. What they were doing is what they understood. And we need to be careful that we do not get caught up in natural understanding and natural reasoning. Amen. Because Jesus is supernatural. You see, when you got saved, I mean, Somebody said to you, what did change? Did your hair change? Did this change? And all that you could say is, I could feel change. The way I felt wasn't the same. The way I spoke wasn't the same. The way I did things wasn't the same. Amen? So that change, it's a supernatural change. But we continuously, right now, come on, all of us, we are reasoning by what the professionals have to say, and we're not reasoning what the Lord has to say. Amen? So this is what they did. They reasoned with the professionals. Paul stood back and said, well, I've had a supernatural encounter with God. I know my Lord and I know what my Lord can do. I've gone through some trials and tribulations. I've seen Him do amazing things. But hang on, these people don't understand who the Lord is and what the Lord can do. Number two, I want, I want to also say this to you. Then they said to them, they said, it is not a place uh, suitable to winter in. Now when they say suitable, it doesn't mean that if they stay there, they're going to get shipwrecked. But what they were really saying, it wasn't a comfortable place to winter in. Amen. Do we get that? So, another thing that was moving them was comfort. Write it down. Many of us, we move by reason, we move by expectation, and then thirdly, we move by comfort. Am I comfortable? Amen. And many a times, the Lord is challenging us and putting us out of comfort. But the minute 
the Lord pulls us out of comfort, we get a bit weary because we're trying to reason with why we're uncomfortable. And we've got to start to understand that the Lord's pulling you out of a comfortable thing because the only way to test your capabilities and your abilities is when you're uncomfortable. Amen? The only way to test your strength and to know what you're capable of doing is to pull you out of comfort. Amen? So they, 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 they were conformed, conformed to the comfort because they said, well, this is not a suitable place to enter. If we move over to Phoenix and we can reach there, that's a more comfortable place. It's a more suitable place for us to, 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 to enter there and to be there. And that wasn't the plan of the Lord. Amen? That wasn't the plan of the Lord. And they were looking at the natural and what the natural was throwing at them. And I want you today, I want you just to take this into note. Amen? We, can, we cannot be moved by natural reason. Number one. We are always asking what are the prophets saying, but we're not listening to the prophets. So we cannot be moved by natural reason. Number two, we cannot move by expectation because expectation gets you into trouble. I spoke about it last week. Number three, that I want you to really grab hold of, watch what makes you comfortable. You see, many of us are fighting battles that are not really our battles to fight, but we, we fight them because we want it's a place that we find our company. So we say, well, I'm battling to pray, I'm battling to spend time in the Word, I'm battling to do this, I'm battling to do that. And it's not because of anything, it's because the, the enemy has buffeted you to fight a fight that doesn't belong to you. Because you're fighting it from a place of comfort, and the Lord wants to pull you out of that place of comfort. Let's carry on. Acts 27, 21 to 26. But after long abstinence from food, listen, Paul was fasting. Then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened to me. And not have sailed from Crete and incurred such disaster and loss. I mean, you can go read the whole of 27. I welcome you, but because of time, we can't read it today. But Paul says to me, he says, listen, after a long time, he says to me, he says, you have not listened to me. You should have listened to me. Now we have sailed into Crete. We've incurred this disaster and loss. We've incurred this shipwreck. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna lose much because you have not listened to me. Listen, one thing I need you to understand. When one thing happens, many things start to happen. Many things start to change. It's a domino effect. They chose, listen, listen to this. They chose to take reason, natural reason. They chose to listen to the professionals. They chose to, to be embraced by their comfort. So many, this little thing that they did, this little decision to say, we, we're traveling to Phoenix, I mean, brought much change. It brought a big domino effect. What are the rules of life? Consequence. With every action, there is going to be a reaction. Amen? And many of us, we, 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 are, we are comfortable with the action, but we're not comfortable with the reaction. We're not comfortable with what's going to happen based on the decision I've made. And many of us make a decision based, come on, on comfort, based on reasoning, based on expectation. So we make... We make a decision based on those things. God's not part of the decision we make. And that's why I felt the Lord saying, tell them that it's happening. Because they made decisions based on what they want. Not based on what the Lord is saying. Amen. So because we've made that decision based on those things, I mean, we've created a domino effect. There's a consequence for what we've done. And now because there's an action, there's going to be a reaction. Amen. So, because of the reaction, now we've got to, we've got to deal with consequences. So Paul says, he says, listen, you haven't listened to me. And Paul says it clearly. He says, you haven't listened to me. Maybe you should have listened to me. And you shouldn't have sailed from Crete. You've incurred disaster and you've incurred loss. Why? Because you moved on what everybody else said. You did not listen to me, a man of God that was fasting and praying. You didn't listen to me that I perceived that my God was speaking to me that I may let you know that we are going to, we're going to keep going loss. We're going to lose some life and you're going to listen, but you are too consumed by your comfort. Listen, I felt the Lord say that sometimes you're fighting against what you should be fighting for. You see, they were fighting against Paul. They were all going against Paul. They were all going against what Paul was saying. But they should have been fighting with Paul. That instead of going against him, they should have been for him. But you know what? God is amazing. And that's why I said God never leaves you. Because although they were fighting against Paul and they should have been fighting with Paul, God is still in the mix. Many of us 
many, many of us, and, and, and I feel a lot of us do this. We feel because we are going through something, although you've made a wrong decision. Amen. Or you, 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 you've, you've gone down a road that wasn't godly, it was based on comfort and based on your own desires and your feelings, your emotions. Although you've gone down that, that road, God has not left you. He's not forsaken you. He's still with you. Amen. And He wants to bring you back to where you belong. Amen. That's what I love about the Lord. There's no fail in Jesus Christ. There's no fail in God's kingdom. It's always a redo. Amen. So let the Lord shake you and bring you back to where you need to be. Because Paul comes back and he says, listen man, you haven't listened to me. You know, and, and you're going to suffer loss because you haven't listened to me. Amen. But, but it's okay. Amen. Listen. Why are they going to suffer loss? Because of their own heart. But this is what Paul says. He says to them, he speaks to them, he gives them this, this whole thing, and he says to them, this is the situation, this is the circumstance, you should have listened to me, and then let's read on. It says, and now I urge you to take heart. Listen. For there will be no loss of life among you. Why? Because Paul is with them. But only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong. Hmm. I want to stop there before I carry on. And whom I serve. Know who you belong to. And know who you serve. Paul reiterates it. He said, There stood an angel before me last night. From whom the God I serve. Amen. And from whom the God that I belong to. He makes a declaration saying, You see, my God. Amen. My God. Doesn't operate in your expectations. My God doesn't operate in your comfort. My God doesn't operate in your reasoning. My God whom I belong to. Amen. And whom I serve. Sent an angel, amen, to, to speak to me last night. And the angel said to me, we're not going to incur any loss of life, but we're going to lose the ship. Let me carry on. Saying, do not be afraid, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told to me. However, we must not run aground. On, sorry, we must run aground. On a certain island. Oh, I just want to say this quickly to you. Paul says, do not be afraid. Amen. You must be brought before Caesar. The angel says to Paul. I want to say this to you. I want you to write this down. Some of you move by reasoning. Some of you move by comfort. Right? Some of you move by expectation. But you know what's happening? And I want to speak this to many of you today. I mean, you're just going on a detour. That's all. The, God, the Lord's going to take you to where you belong. You've gone on a detour. Because that's what the angel is saying to them. He says to Paul, Paul will incur no loss of life. The ship is going is to is 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 run aground. They're going to lose the ship, but they're going to lose no life. Because you need to go before Caesar. They've gone an opposite way. They're going to go in a different direction. I'm going to do some things on your way to Caesar. Amen. But what I, need to, what I need to fulfill shall be fulfilled because Paul, lo, you are shipwrecked. Lo, there's this confusion. Lo, they, 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 they get hold of reasoning that does not belong to me. I am your God, whom you serve, the angel. I'm going to take you to the point that you need to be at, and that's the point of being with Caesar. I need to deliver you before Caesar, and that's where you need to be. Amen. So I wanted to say this to you. Many people make decisions because of the unknown. But I want to say this to you today, and everybody that's out, out there, I want you to make a big note. Help is on its way. Doesn't matter you made the wrong decision. I Man, I was sitting this, this morning, and maybe 2 o'clock in this morning, I was, I was praying, and I was feeling uneasy and uncomfortable, and I'm saying, Lord, what is it? And the Lord said this to me, He said, Son, you have not identified the attack. There's an attack. But you have not identified it because it's an attack that you do not know. It's an attack that you do not understand. It's an attack that is not normal to you. And, you, and you're used to the norm. But I want you to be, be more careful. And I want you to identify where the attack is coming from. Amen. And I want us to understand this. Because help is on its way. I just said, Lord, what is it? And the Lord showed me exactly what's going on. You see, when we minister in church, I mean, God shows us when the enemy wants to bring confusion in the church, when the enemy wants to bring confusion on the altar, but right now, the altar has changed. Amen. Amen. We're not doing church as we know it. So the Lord said to you, you're getting attacked through media, 
here and you're not praying, you're not identifying that the enemy wants to stagnate you, he wants to make you uncomfortable, he wants to make you anxious, he wants to make you fearful, he wants to make you feel that you're incapable of doing it, and you haven't identified that the enemy is busy doing things in your life. And I want you to pray. And as I started praying, I said, Lord, loosen these things that are not of you. Loosen the confusion the enemy is bringing over media. Loosen what the enemy is trying to do. And I felt the Lord just bring in that peace. You know, the peace that surpasses all understanding. So yes, hang on. Help is on its way. You see, when they're about to run down, when, when they were at their wits end, when they thought they were, they were going to lose everything, Paul stands up amidst them and he, and he starts speaking. And he said, men, you should have listened to me. Now I urge you to take heart. Make your heart strong in your situation and circumstance. Make your heart strong. For there will be, no li- be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. But he says, make your heart strong. I mean, take heart. Strengthen yourself in your situation. Strengthen yourself in your Yes, we've made, we've made mistakes. Yes, we've made decisions based on comfort. Yes, come on, we need, to, we need to declare it. We need to be honest with the Lord. Yes, we've made, we've made decisions based on what everybody else says, based on the professionals out there, based on our reasoning, based on how we feel, based on the expectations that we've got over. Yes, we've made all these decisions. They made all the same decisions. But Paul, he says, my God, the God whom I belong to, the God whom I serve, has sent an angel. And the Lord is sending angels to fight on your behalf. The Lord is speaking to you today. That listen, it doesn't matter you made a mistake. It doesn't matter you've gone the wrong way. I am still God. I'm still going to deliver you from your situation and your circumstance. I'm still going to set you apart. I'm still going to accomplish what I've said to accomplish. Why? In Luke 1, 3, it says, I am a God. It does the impossible. With man, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So it doesn't matter if you feel you're going to be shipwrecked. It doesn't matter if your ship's going to run aground. If you feel your life's going to run aground. It doesn't matter. What matters is the Lord Jesus Christ is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will not leave you open. The day you say, Lord, here I am. Save me. Set me free. He came and he stood in the midst and he said, this belongs to me. He pulled you out of the clutches of Satan and said, this belongs to me. I've washed them by the blood of Jesus. I've borne their sins on the cross of Calvary. So your mistakes have not secluded you from his grace. Your mistakes have not secluded you from who he is in your life. Come on. I hope you're at home saying amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you're at home saying, listen, Lord Jesus, I'm excited. And I am, I am really embracing what you're saying today. Because Lord, I've, I've done some things based on my reasoning. I've done some things based on my comfort. I've done some things based on my expectation. I was opposing what they were, what they were opposing on the boat. I was doing exactly what they were doing. I wasn't fighting with you. I was fighting against you. And Lord, I wanted you to carry my battles and to, to, to be my victory maker. But Lord, I couldn't find any victory because I wasn't walking with you. I wasn't fighting with you, but I was fighting against you. You see, when Paul makes a declaration, he says, an angel shot up from the God that I serve. Amen. A shot up from my God. Amen. When Paul made that declaration, you know what he's, he was saying? Now you've been, a, you've been against my God, but now I need you to fight with me, not against me. I want you to fight for me. If you listen to me, if you do exactly what my God is telling you to do, many of you will live and live a life of abundance. Amen. You see, the Bible speaks about Paul going to Malta and the Malta getting saved by Paul. But I want to say something. How many of these people that were on this ship got saved in Malta? Think about that. Because the whole of Malta got saved. What about those that were with Paul, that were shipwrecked, that Paul had spoken a word into their life and said, listen, you're not going to lose your life. We're going to lose the boat. We're going to lose cargo. We're going to lose some stuff. But hang on, you don't stress about that because you're going to lose nothing because God is with you. Those things that you're losing, it's natural things. It's profits, nothing. Because the Lord God will come and set you free. So I felt the Lord saying to me, son, how many of those that were upon that ship, that were shipwrecked, got saved? It's a question that we could ask today. Amen. You see, and I want to speak to you today. Today, I want you to grab hold of this. We only start listening, amen, when we start losing control. I want us to write it down because many of us are doing the same. We only start listening to what the Lord is saying when we are losing control. You see, they only started to listen to Paul 
Because they were losing control. They had no option but to listen to Paul. Because they tried everything. They tried the professionals. They tried reasoning. Amen. They tried comfort. They tried everything that they know. They tried all the strengths that they had. But they never tried the strength that Paul had. And you know what the strength that Paul had? Was God. The strength that Paul had was our God, our Jesus. Our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. That's the strength you've got. But many of us don't want to grab a hold of the strength when we're losing control. We don't want to listen to what the Lord's saying. Amen? And, 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 and it's so amazing because when you start listening to the Lord, He's going to set you free. We don't like the feeling of losing control. We don't. But we have to start adopting the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to start adopting what the Lord is saying. We have to start adopting our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? As the helmsman. Helmsman is the person that's in control of the ship. we got to start taking hold that Jesus is in control. Because when you start grabbing hold of Jesus, don't wait to lose control and then give control to Jesus. I want you to give control to Him now. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, give Jesus control now. You see, many of us start making decisions only when we're losing control. Amen? Because we first want to adopt what the natural things are saying, what we see, we want to adopt how we feel. And only when we really see that we, we're really on, the, on the, the, the last hour, we want to say, Lord, here I am. Amen? But we've got to stop. And we're going to stop allowing ourselves to lose control before we give control to Jesus. And I want to speak to everybody. Because we are saved, we are set free. But many a times, Jesus doesn't have control. We're still making decisions based on our abilities and our wants, our needs and our comfort. And today I felt the Lord saying that it's going to happen. Things are happening in their lives. Amen. But they need to start to learn. Even if it's happening, they need to start to learn to expect the unexpected. They need to learn how to operate in the unexpected. Even when they make bad decisions, when they make wrong decisions, Lord, I'm with them, but they've got to operate in that expectation that I never leave them nor forsake them. Knowing that faith is a substance of something that is not seen. You see, everything changes in time. Nothing ever stays the same. And that's what I felt the Lord saying. Things are always going to happen. There's always going to be expectations that are not going to be met because things always change in time. The biggest fear is not the place you find yourself, it's the unknowing. The not knowing what tomorrow brings, amen, is the concern that we carry. That's the biggest thing. The not knowing what tomorrow brings is the concern and it worries us because we are not creatures, amen. We're not humans that are, are comfortable with the unexpected. We always want to work things out, fact. You, you, before you go shopping, you, you write out your shopping list, you know how you spend your money. We, we, we naturally want to have control. And that's why I said the only time we start grabbing hold of, listen, we can speak about Paul, but we need to speak about the helmsman and the other people on the boat. Because many, many a times, and I would say 70% of the time, you, we, you all carry on like those men. We don't carry on like Paul. We carry on like them. We reason. Amen. We check our comfort, we, we check our expectations, we, we check our surroundings, we check our abilities, we check our can and cannots, we, can, we check our want and our want nots, we check our need and our need nots. Come on, that's what we do. We don't go as Paul goes, we go according to that. So because we, we, we want to know what tomorrow brings, we want to know what the next day brings, we want to know what the day after brings, and that's the problem. I, I want to say this to you. you, you know why many people die of sickness? It's not the sickness that kills, it's the unknowing. It's the concern of the not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring because they have just served me a life sentence. That's what kills you. Because you don't come with an expectation of what Jesus is saying. You're moving by the not knowing. And that's what kills us. Because you don't put Jesus and say, no, no, hang on. I still know what tomorrow brings. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Automatically, I look at my dead sins, I look at my sickness, I look at my disease, and it consumes me. Why? Because I'm scared of the not knowing. As long as I've got control over my life, I'm in control. The minute I don't have control, I'm out of control. And when I'm out of control, then I want to give Jesus control. And Jesus wants control now more than ever. We're not supposed to have control. If salvation has come, read your Bible. You confess with your mouth. You make a declaration and you believe in your heart. That Jesus Christ, I mean, is the Son of God. You make Him Lord of your life. How can He 
be Lord? I want you to get this this morning. How can he be Lord? Amen. If there's a shift of authority continuously. One day Jesus has authority over your life. The next day you take it back and you say, no, I've got authority. I make a bad decision based on what I want to do, then I blame Jesus. But it didn't go well. I gave my heart to the Lord. I've been working and walking with Jesus for 10 years. I've been walking this life. I'm a good Christian. I'm a faithful Christian. But I prayed for this and the Lord didn't answer me because He didn't answer me. I did exactly what I was not supposed to do. And who do I blame? I blame Jesus. And the enemy uses this because why I'm not fighting with Jesus. I'm fighting against Jesus. I'm not making Him Lord. I'm lording over my life. I'm lording over Jesus. Because if I've made Him Lord and I take back control and I lord over my own life, I want to lord over Jesus. And that's not why He called us. That's not why He set you apart. That's why when Paul went shipwrecked, God was still in control. He made a declaration and it was a great declaration that He made. He said, the God whom I serve, my God. He's saying, not your God, not your foreign God, not your idols, not the things that you place trust in, not your wisdom, not your comfort. Not your reasoning, not your expectations, but my God, whom I serve, sent an angel. My God, I want you to understand, my God will deliver you from your situation and circumstance. My Jesus will deliver you from your situation and circumstance. Not my reasoning, not my expectation, not my comfort, but my God will deliver me from my situation. He will deliver me from my transgression. He will deliver me from my iniquity. He will deliver me from the mighty clay. My God. So he's making a declaration. The angel came and the angel has declared that we're going to lose some stuff but we ain't going to lose life. You might have to lose some stuff. You might have to keep some stuff up for Jesus. But that's okay. I'd rather keep some stuff up for Jesus and walk with Jesus. Then hold on to stuff. Amen. And Jesus is walking with me. I don't want you to get this. I walk with Jesus. And Jesus walks with me. When I walk with Jesus. I'm under surrender. But when Jesus is walking with me. And I haven't looked at him. I haven't, I haven't allowed him to be Lord over my life. Amen. Am I walking with Jesus? Jesus is walking with me. Never leaves me nor forsakes me. But when I'm walking. And I don't make him part of my walk. Amen. I'm going to suffer some losses. And that's the problem. We don't want to face consequences. And the rule of life is with every decision, amen, with every action, there's going to be a reaction. If you make a good decision, you're going to have a good reaction. If you make a bad decision, there's going to be a bad reaction. Amen. It's almost like taking cream and putting it on your body. Amen. It's not supposed to be on the body, but it's supposed to be used for something else. And you break forth the rash. Lord Jesus, move my rash. Amen. That's a reaction of the action of using something that you're not supposed to use. So today I want you to embrace what Paul saying, saying, listen, my God, my God, my God, my God. Your biggest fear is not the place you find yourself in, it's the unknown. The not knowing what tomorrow brings, the concern for the unexpected. We always try to anticipate the tomorrow and what tomorrow will bring. And we are unsure or can't anticipate our tomorrow. If we are unsure and cannot anticipate our tomorrow, we become uneasy. Nervous and scared. Natural. Those are natural things. You see, every time there's a shift from one thing to another, it becomes a place of the unexpected. And I felt the Lord saying, learn to expect the unexpected. I just want to read this, Galatians 2, 1 to 2. Then after 14 years, I went up, to, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. Listen to this. And Paul says, I went up by revelation and I communicated to them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. <clears throat> so Paul doesn't move. I want you to listen to this. This is an amazing scripture. He says, I went up by revelation. Amen. I went up by revelation. He didn't move on his feelings. He didn't move on his emotions. He didn't move on his comfort. He moved on the revelation that God had given him. Amen. So the word says, I went up by revelation and communicated to them the gospel which I preach amongst the Gentiles. But privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. I, I want to give this to you quickly. And I want you to get this. Paul's greatest strength, David's greatest strength, Joseph's greatest strength, Daniel's greatest strength in the Bible, amen, was moving 
in the unknown. That was the greatest thing. As long as you're always trying to calculate what tomorrow brings, amen, you're not allowing the Lord to move on your behalf. You see, Paul had to learn how to operate in the unknown. Paul had to. Joseph had to. Daniel had to. Amen. They had to learn. David had to. They had to learn how to operate in the unknown. Because in the pit, it was unknown. In the palace, it was unknown. In the jail, it's unknown. David, the same thing. He operated in the unknown. When he shows up to fight his greatest battle, amen, instead of being able to look at Goliath, amen, his brother stands before him and says, what are you doing here? Trying to move his focus, amen, of what he needs to do. And he's looking at the known, but thank God he decides to turn around and look at the unknown because the greatest strength of a Christian's life is the unknown. Because the unknown is where God operates. He said, my God has sent an angel, the God whom I serve, has sent an angel to speak to me in this place of unknown. Because now you do not know what you're going to do. He's telling them, you don't know what you're going to do. There's no comfort because you can't go there. The waves are beating upon them many days. They fill in with water. They don't have an answer for the problem. The only thing they can pray is say, well, if this weather will cease, if the wind will cease, and Paul saying, listen, that ain't going to help you. You need to step into the unknown. You decided to go that way. Now I want you to know that in the unknown, that is where my God operates. In the unknown, that is where my God sends his angels to fight my greatest battle. That is where my the angel come forth and bring forth my victory. That is where I run my race the greatest. That is where I accomplish the most greatest things for my God is in the unknown. Paul had, had learned how to operate in the unknown. You go read that. Paul would walk in the synagogue. He wouldn't know if he was walking back out, beaten back out, thrown in jail. He always walked into the unknown. Not once did he say, I'm not going to go there because they're going to beat me. I'm not going to go there because they're going to put me in shackles. I'm not going to get on that ship because there's going to be a shipwreck. I'm not going to do these things. No, he went because he knew the greatest blessing over your life. I want you to grab hold of it today. I want you to write it down. I want you to embrace it. The greatest blessing of the Lord upon your life is when you operate in the unknown. That's when you see the greatest hand of God is in the unknown. You see, they did not know what they were going to do. But God knew what needed to be done. Where you're at right now, you might not know what's going on. You might not know your situation and your circumstance. But when you lift up your hands and say, My God, whom I serve, will send the angel to fight for me. And he will fight my greatest battle in my own mind. The God will come through for you. Paul would go from city to city. Not knowing what the city had in store for him. He would walk in synagogues not knowing how he would come out. Maybe he'd walk in and not walk out. Maybe he'd walk in and get thrown out. Maybe he'd walk in and get beaten out. Maybe he'd walk in and get chained out. But it never stopped him from stepping into the unknown. Because he knew God operates the best in the unknown. You see, what made these men great in the Bible was operating in a place of no expectation. Of just trusting the Lord for the Lord and what the Lord wants to do. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundantly in stripes. Above measure in prison, more frequently in debts, often. Wow. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbery, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in perils amongst false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things. What comes upon me daily? My deep concerns for all the church. Man, this is amazing. Besides the other things, he says, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the church. Did you see, underline and highlight if you've got a Bible, Paul makes it a declaration. And I want you to pick it up. You see, if anybody reads the Bible, anyone of you read the Bible and say that the Bible is boring, you need to go back and start reading the Bible and ask the Lord to open your eyes because the Bible is the most complex word I've ever read. It's, a, it's an amazing word. 
And then Paul makes his declaration. He says, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern is for all the churches. That's what he's saying. He said, I've concerned myself with the calling that's upon my life. Amen. I concern. Listen, in Acts, he says, the word of God says that he's a chosen vessel of mine. Amen. And I'll show him many things that he must suffer for my name's sake. That's what the Lord said about Paul. Amen. And what Paul does is, and it's an amazing thing, he says, I am concerning myself what concerns the Lord. Write it down. You've highlighted it. <clears throat> You've underlined it in your Bible. Make a note next to it. Dirty Bible, clean Christian. Clean Bible, dirty Christian. So make your Bible a bit dirty. I want you to make a little star next to it, and I want you to say that I need to concern myself with what concerns my father. You see, that's why when Paul walked into the synagogues, he was not worried about any expectation. He went unknowingly. He went knowing that the only thing he needed to know was that God sent him. Many of us, many of us, many of us are trying to work out the sending of the Lord. Amen. And we're not standing in the calling, we're not standing in the place that the Lord's put us. Because we're trying to work out the calling of the Lord. We're trying to work out that the Lord must call me according to my comfort. The Lord ain't going to call you according to your comfort. He's going to call you according to His desires. As Paul says, my yearning, the thing that concerns me is for all the churches. That's what I'm concerned about. I've been beaten, I've been battered, I've been bruised, I've been stamped on. He, he gives us a whole list of things, shipwrecked. He gives a list of things that He's been through, but at the end He makes a declaration. He says, but my concerns, and he says this, he says, no matter what the things that I go through daily, there's things I go through daily, besides being beaten, besides being locked up, besides being shipwrecked, daily I'm going through stuff. But that's not what concerns me. What concerns me, amen, and my deep concern is for the things of the church. Listen, I want you to get this today, and I want you to write this down. I don't think Paul was strong, the strongest. I don't think Paul was the strongest. Amen. I think he was the most courageous. I don't think he was the strongest. Amen. I think he was the most courageous. The one who you think is the strongest is usually the weakest one. You think they're strong, but they're carrying out the courage that the Lord has bestowed upon them. He or she is not stronger. Amen. They're just courageous. David was courageous. Joseph was courageous. Man, I was sitting down this week and I felt the Lord speak to me. I was just imagining David, sorry, Joseph going from, pit, from the pit to prison to palace and going through all these trials and tribulations before he gets there to where the Lord wants him to be. Every time the Lord moved him, he didn't know what to expect. Amen? Because the pit was a place of darkness and a place of being alone. Then he was sold as a slave. Amen? So he didn't know when his blessing is coming. And when his blessing came... Amen. Then Potiphar's wife wants to, she wants to take over because she saw the blessing upon life. He didn't know what to expect because everything that happened was unexpected. Listen. The Paul that we knew before Damascus is not the same Paul that we read about after Damascus. He's changed to be set free. And I want to speak this over your life today. Whatever your name is, I want you to write it down. The Josiah that was found before salvation is not the same Jose that is before you today. Amen. And I want you to grab hold of that. Because that's the truth. The same Paul, that Paul that, that before the road of Damascus, before he came off and he fell to the ground. Amen. Is not the same Paul that, that we there that's speaking right now. He was changed, he was set free. He was changed by God. And you've been changed by God. But today, start running in the unknown. Start, start moving in, in the unexpected. Start grabbing hold of those things. Amen. Start trying to work it out. What was least? Amen. Paul was least. Although in the world they thought he was great, he was least. What was least became the greatest in God's kingdom. At that time when he was persecuting the Christians, he was least in God's kingdom. I mean, he wasn't even part of God's kingdom. He just said, Paul, why do you persecute me? Amen. But after that transition, from being the least, he became the greatest. What they controlled, what, what they control over Paul, amen? What had control over his life, now Paul had control over. 
And that's important. What had control of your life before salvation, what had control of your life, even where you're at right now, the situation you find yourself right now, what had control over you, when you start to look upon the Lord and say, my God, the God whom I serve is going to fight my battles, and I'm going to walk a walk of victory, I'm going to run a race of endurance. When I start making these declarations, amen, that that is what control of your life, or control of your situation, Control of your, your mind. I feel some people got some things that they're battling in their mind. That's got control of your mind. That's got control of your thought pattern. And that has got control over you. When you make the declaration and you let the Lord God, God Almighty have control, when you let Him take the, the reins over your life, when you let Him be the helmsman, then you take that control over that situation and circumstance. What had the hold of Paul? Now Paul has hold over. You see, when Paul walked into that ship, I want you to get this. This is, this, is, this is deep. You see, when Paul came on that ship, that ship had hold over Paul. When he spoke to them, he said, I perceive that they had authority over Paul. They could speak over Paul naturally. Not supernaturally, because God was in control. But you know what? The minute that situation turned upside down and they stepped into the unknown, because Paul was used to operating in the unexpected, used to operating in the unknown, and the minute they came to that place, Paul steps in. Amen. And when he had hold over Paul, now Paul has hold over. Amen. Naturally, not only supernaturally. You see, when I hold on to God in the supernatural, when I hold on to His word, you see, Paul held on to the word and he said, I perceive he never got angry with God. He said, well, they didn't want to listen to me. He went back and said, you should have listened to me. He didn't say, Lord, they're not listening. Lord, what are you going to do now? No. He took the word he gave them. He said, you have not listened to me. He didn't go back to God. He went back to them. He said, you have not listened to me. You see, he got on the boat. He still had authority in God. Naturally, they thought they had authority over him. But when, when the whole situation turns over, he doesn't only have authority. I want you to listen to this over your life today. You see, when you flip that over and then you get to this understanding today, when you have control, amen, over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, when you have that control, you'll start having control of the situation. You'll start having control of the things that are around you. You'll start having control of your finances. You'll start having control of your mouth, of your mind, how you carry yourself, how you speak, how you uplift you. You'll start having that control that supersedes yourself. That's what came over Paul. That road to Damascus, Jesus came and took over Paul's life and superseded what Paul wants. So Paul says, I've gone through all these things. All these things I've gone over. I've had that happen to me. I've gone through them. I've been beaten. I've been shipwrecked. I've gone through all of these things. But my declaration, Paul says, is I'm going to concern myself what concerns with Jesus Christ. And what concerns Jesus Christ is his kingdom. Peter, I promise rock, build my church. Paul, concern yourself with the concerned Jesus Christ. Concern yourself what concerns the Lord. Amen. Be a blessing in the kingdom. Be a prayer warrior. Be, be an intercessor. Amen. Be a worshiper. Be a man and, God, a man and woman of God that, that loves your neighbors, that, that takes care of your neighbors, that, that, that wants for your neighbors. Amen. And as I close, I want to say this to you. Take hold of the unknown. The Lord, Lord last night said to me this, and I put it on the phone and I thought it was a word for me, but I think it's also for everybody out there. Love who you are in Christ. Love where you're at in Christ. Number three, love where the Lord is taking you. Adopt those three loves for the, G, for the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love who you are. Love where you're at and love where the Lord is taking you. Amen. Love everything He's doing. Don't oppose nothing. Amen. Because it's in the unknown. Amen. That you'll see the angels of God move on your behalf. Amen. That many people will be shipwrecked. Amen. But you'll come unscathed. Amen. And you'll come on the other side with a life and a life of abundance in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I want to give you the scripture, Psalm 1 to 3. As you go today, I want you to be planted in the Word of God. I want you to be planted. I want you to be planted as a tree. I mean, by the river's water. I love the scripture, and it's a scripture that always touches my heart. Take hold of the unknown of your life today. And then before I give you this, this scripture, I want to pray for you, Father. I want you to just close your eyes. We have Lord, I'm praying for those that are out there, Father God, that they make many decisions, Father God, based on their comfort, based, Father God, on how they feel, based on their emotions, based, Father God, on what they see. But Lord, many of them have also made decisions, Father God, based on, on ignorance, Father God. Many have made decisions, Father God, Lord, according to the natural reason, to the natural resources. 
to the, the natural things around them, Father God. And today I felt you saying, Father, these things are going to happen. And don't be conformed to them happening, Lord. I want to speak this into their lives, Lord Jesus. But embrace the unknown. Don't run from it. Run to it. Because God operates the best in the unknown. He operates the best in the not knowing. He operates the best in a place of anger. Expectation. A place that you will just grab off of Jesus because there's nothing else to grab hold of. You see, they were in the sea and they were deep and there was nowhere to go. Amen. But Paul knew his source was alive and alive forevermore. His source never changed. And today your source has never changed. Your source is Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today that Lord, they will not just carry on living a life that you're walking with them, but Lord, that they will walk with you. That they will submit to you, Father God. That they will submit to the great I am. That, Lord, they will stop reasoning yes. with their situation. So that they will stop reasoning with their expectations. They will stop reasoning with their comfort. But they will look upon you, Father God, and know this is Jesus. This is what you are doing, Father God. And then you will operate the best, Father God, is the place, Father God, of the unknown. Father, so today I pray, Lord, as you as you used Paul, David, Daniel, as you moved and used my all, Father God, all of your great servants, Father God, in a place of not knowing. Father, I pray today. If you have, I want you to surrender. Say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Lord, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna work by my reasoning. I'm not gonna operate by my expectations. But I'm gonna declare, declare that my Jesus is my Lord, my God. And it's Him whom I will serve. I declare in Jesus' name that the Lord will move on my behalf. And I will not be conformed to what I see, to what I feel, to where I'm going. But I'm going to look upon the Lord and I'm going to trust Him. And I'm going to trust Him in the unknowing. I'm going to trust Him in the unexpected. I'm going to trust Him every day when I wake up. I'm going to look upon Him and say, Lord, You need to direct my day. You, you are Lord over my life. You are King over my life. Lord, I pray today in Jesus' name that Father, they will grab hold of the Word today. It is happening in Jesus' name. It is happening. There's detours over their lives right now because it's been bad decision and there's consequences to the bad decision. And Lord, you're not going to lead them astray because you're with them and you'll never leave them. All they have to do is lift up their hands and say, Lord, I'm ready for a detour. I'm ready for a detour. If there's losses, Father, I'm willing to have those losses because Lord Jesus, as long as you're with me, I'll never lose anything because you will replenish my losses. You'll take care of my needs because my blessing is in you, Jesus. So today, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are, we are welcoming a detour in Jesus' name. We are welcoming, Father, that detour. Let there be losses, Father God. But we know, Father God, that there will be no loss of life. But Lord, that that you've set to accomplish in our lives in Jesus' name, so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Come on. If you're at home, I want you to say it. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Not by my no my power, but by the Spirit of God. That His will be done in our lives. Lord Jesus, bless them today, Father God. Let them stop, Father God, being afraid of the unknown. Let them be like Paul, Daniel. Let them be like Joseph, David. Let them be courageous, like Joseph, in the unknowing. That they will not be weary and faint hearted. But they will embrace it and say, Lord, in this season of the unknown. In this place of no expectations. In this place of discomfort. You are my God. Whom I serve. Whom I'll never leave and I'll never forsake. As your word says, you never leave and forsake me, Lord. So, Father God, shall I never be dismayed and discouraged. Shall I never walk alone again. But, Father, I'll walk with you wherever I go. And I'll declare the comfort, the mercy of my Lord and Savior. I'll declare that He's Lord over my life to everybody. Yes. When people ask me, Lord, why is it going so well? I'm going to declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. That I've given my heart to the Lord and He's changed my life. Many Christians are out there, Christians 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, have stopped declaring to people around them that I live a good life because I serve a good Jesus. They stop declaring what the Lord Jesus is doing in their lives. Today I want you to start to declare that I live a, a fulfilled life, a life full of, full of comfort because Jesus is my comforter. Not because I'm in comfort, because He is my comforter. So Father, I pray that today, Father God, they will embrace you, Lord, in their situation and circumstance, Lord, that this day, Lord, I sense 
such a presence of the Lord this morning. I want you to embrace it. I want you to breathe in and say, Lord, I receive that. I receive your word. It's happening, Father. And I'm not going to be scared as it's happening. I'm not going to be scared of the unknown. I'm not going to be scared of being shipwrecked. I'm not going to be scared of losses. I'm going to make my heart strong. As Paul said, take heart. I'm going to take heart in Jesus. Knowing if he's doing this, it's for my benefit. That I'm going to come stronger. I'm going to come out stronger on the other side. I'm going to come out more grounded in Jesus on the other side. I'm going to come out more focused on Jesus on the other I'm not going to be worried. I'm not going to be stressed. I'm not going to be concerned. Because I know the word of the Lord is come today and the Lord is saying it is happening. Embrace the unknown because I'm with you. They might beat you. They might spit on you. You might feel like you're shipwrecked. You might feel alone. You said, I've gone through many things. But I am concerned what concerns my Father. Today, Father, we declare from this day forward, we concern ourselves, Lord, what concerns you, Lord Jesus. Help us, Father, to be the sons and the daughters, Lord, that you've called in Jesus' name. Write this down, Psalm 123. I pray this will be your life today, and I pray this will be your portion from this day forward. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its, in its season, whose leaf also shall not winter, and whatever he does shall prosper. That you may prosper, that you may be planted in that, 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 that river's bed, that you may not be swayed from the north, the south, the west, or the east, but you shall be grounded in the word of God, because as you are grounded, amen, your leaf shall not wither, and whatever you do shall prosper. Even may it may, may not look like you're prospering. Even if it may look, amen, like you're not blessed. But you are blessed. Amen. And you are prospering. Because Jesus is in your boat. As he was in the boat with Paul, he's in the boat with you. As he sent the angel to Paul, he sent his angels to camp around you. Amen. He says, angels charge over his children. Today welcome the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, I welcome you to have your way. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. I welcome your presence in my life. I welcome your presence in my house, in my family's life. I welcome you in everything I do and say. I welcome you in this hard place. I welcome you in my uncomfortable place. You see, Jesus is not man. Amen. He's God. Amen. And He is the greatest comforter that you'll ever know. Amen. He will comfort you when there's nobody to comfort you. When you're alone in a jail cell sitting in a corner and there's nobody speaking to you, nobody looking at you, nobody caring for you, Jesus is sitting next to you and saying, I'm here to comfort you. I'm more than what you need. When you're sitting in a hospital bed, amen, and you conform to sickness and conform to disease, conform to COVID-19, Jesus is with you. They might not let your family in. They're not going to let your friends in. But Jesus is in. He's with you. All you have to say is, Jesus, hold me. Hold me in the palm of your hand. Embrace me, Jesus, as you embrace your disciples. Embrace me in my loneliness. Embrace me in my discomfort. May you comfort me in my need. May you comfort me in this time of trial and hardship as you comfort Paul. May I be stripped and beaten. Lord, I'm not going to be conformed to my being, but I'm going to look upon Jesus and say, comfort me. For you're the God of comfort and the God of mercy. And your love endures forever. Lord, bless them today, Father, that you'll comfort them, that you lead and direct their every step. There's a song that's playing in the background. All my hope is in Jesus. And I thank God that my yesterday is gone. I want to say this to you as I close. Thank God, amen, that my yesterday is gone. Thank God for the word in the now. Thank God for this word that it is happening. And I'm not going to run from the happenings. I'm going to be exactly where the Lord intends for me to be. May the word come and say, I'm going to run shipwreck. I'm not leaving because my Lord has spoken. He will tell me when to leave and he'll tell me when to stay. He'll tell me where to go and when to go. How to go and with whom I need to go. Today I declare in your life and over my life, I'm going to love the Lord for who he is in my life. I'm going to love the Lord for where am I at. I'm going to love the Lord for where he's taken me. I'm going to love the Lord Jesus for what is he doing. I'm going to love him with all my strength, with all my might, and with all that is within me. I am going to love the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name, and every single person that is watching will say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. We receive.
receive it in Jesus' name. Now may the God of comfort be your portion. I pray today that the Holy Spirit will abide and be with you in this time. As you speak to the Lord, as you embrace the happenings of the now, as you embrace your place of discomfort, knowing that He's going to comfort you, I pray that the Holy Spirit will be with you and abide with you. Amen. Until we meet again. May the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Before you put off Junior, I just want you to lift your hand and say, Lord, I receive Jesus today. I receive your comfort. I receive you in this place of discomfort. Because I might be feeling discomforted. But when I receive you and I receive your comfort, man, Lord Jesus, I feel something that I've never felt before. I'm feeling this warmth. I'm feeling this embrace. Thank you, Jesus. I glorify and praise your name. We give you glory, Lord Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We, we give you honor on the most highest. For you are good. You are good, good God. You are a faithful God. You are an awesome God that never leaves us nor forsakes us. When we feel like we're giving up, you step in and say, Don't give up, Lord. I'm with you, Father. Bless them and keep them in Jesus' name. We love each and every one of you. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, may the comfort be your portion. In Jesus' name.